Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about one point perspective, uh, learn a few terms about perspective drawing, and then learn how to draw boxes in one point perspective to make them look three dimensional. So first off, um, perspective itself is kind of the appearance of depth on a flat surface. So making something looking like it's going back in the distance. Um, then there are some things that you need to have on a drawing in perspective in order to make it in perspective. So first of all, we need to have a horizon line. So the horizon is where the earth and the sky meet. It's also your eye level. So no matter where you are, whether you're up in an airplane or if you're, you know, laying on the ground, whatever your eye level is, is going to be the horizon line. So um, I'm just going to draw a line on my paper anywhere. So the horizon can be way up at the top or way at the bottom or right in the middle. Um, in our case, we're going to put it near the middle just so that we have room above and below it for our drawing. So I can start with a flat line like this. Maybe if I'm drawing a landscape, I can add hills or mountains above the horizon if I wanted to. Um, it's entirely up to you. Then the next thing that we need in our drawing is something called a vanishing point. So a vanishing point is the point where objects appear to disappear in the distance. So um, the vanishing point is always on the horizon line and it can be anywhere on the horizon line. So I could have it way off in the corner or I could have it in the middle, it doesn't matter. Um, for our purpose, I'm going to put it in the middle just so that we can have some on either side. In order to help us kind of visualize objects in one point perspective, I have a block here. And so remember how I said the horizon line is always at your eye level. Um, so we'll imagine our horizon line is right here and then our vanishing point is right between my eyes or your eyes too. So um, if an object is right on your eye level, right in front of you, you aren't going to see anything other than the front face of the object. Now, if we were to take that object and raise it up higher, that means we're looking up at it. So we're going to see the front face and the bottom of it because it's above us. If it's directly below us, we're going to see the front face and bottom of, or the top of it because we're looking down at it. Um, same goes for if the object is right to our side. So if it's on the horizon line, and then off to the side, we're going to see the front face and the side of it. Ditto for the other side. So anything that's directly um, vertical from the vanishing point or on the horizon line is going to show us two sides. However, if we were to take this box and then create sort of a diagonal from our vanishing point, we're going to see three sides. So because it's below me, we'll see the top of it because we're looking down at it. We'll see the front face of it and we'll see one side. So three sides, the side that's closest to the vanishing point. Same for over here, we'd see the opposite side because that side would be closest to our vanishing point. And then if we're up above the horizon line, we'd be looking up at the object. So we'd see the front face the side that's closest to the vanishing point and the bottom, because again, we're looking up at it. And same with over here, front, side, and bottom. So if you're ever confused about what sides you're going to see on an object from your vantage point, you can actually grab an object and move it around until you get to the angle that you're looking for. But there are ways to visualize on paper too. So let's get started drawing. All right, once we're ready to start drawing, um, let's do a few different boxes. So we'll do one on the vanishing point and we'll do some above and below. Let's start with a box that's off to the side of the vanishing point. Um, so I'm just gonna make a quick little square. It doesn't have to be super precise or anything. You don't really even have to use a ruler if you don't want to. 
Okay, so I have a square here. Um, you're definitely going to need an eraser for this. There's a lot of erasing involved in perspective drawing. So um, I'm going to erase the horizon line that's inside of my square because you wouldn't see it. It's in front of it. Okay, so now what I'm going to create are things called converging lines. And converging lines are lines that go from the edges of our object to the vanishing point. So they converge or come together at the vanishing point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the corners that are facing my vanishing point and I'm going to connect them to the vanishing point. All right, so any line that is going back in space is going to go to the vanishing point. So if it is not the front face of your object, it's going to be going back in space like this. So they always have to go to the vanishing point. Now the next step that I'm going to do is create a parallel line to the side of my object back here to create the side of the square. So I'm going to line up my ruler with the side of my square and slide it backwards, making sure that it stays parallel. And then I will draw a line there. So this has to stay parallel to this, otherwise it's not going to be an actual sort of cube or rectangular prism. Um, if your ruler slides from side to side, it's going to look pretty funky when you're all done. So, once I have these lines drawn, I can erase my extra converging lines and the horizon line that's in the center. So now I have a box where I see two sides. So remember, anytime you have a box above the horizon, below the horizon, or off to the side, you're going to see two sides. So there would be two sides here, there'd be two sides here, and there would be two sides here. So anything that's directly above or below the vanishing point or off to the side of the vanishing point on the horizon line would give you two sides. So let's talk about instances where we're going to see three sides and that would be kind of at a diagonal off to the side and not on the horizon line. All right, so we are going to draw a box that is above the horizon line and off to the side. So in this case, we have three corners that would meet at the vanishing point. So how I determine that when I am creating my converging lines is any corner that does not get obstructed by other parts of the shape. So for example, if I wanted to line up this corner with the vanishing point, it goes straight through the shape. There's no place where it doesn't go through the shape. So that tells me it's behind it and we wouldn't see it unless if it were see-through. But for our intents and purposes, it's not. So I will not draw a line right there because it would be behind everything. However, all these other three edges um, definitely are not obstructed by the shape. So we will draw our converging lines. So I have three converging lines. Now these converging lines kind of show us where the sides of our object are. So at this point we can go ahead and draw our parallel lines. So again, I'm going to line up my ruler with the edge of the shape and taking care to remain parallel to the shape. This is very important because a lot of people, it happens a lot where your ruler kind of shifts or your brain tells you you need to go this way. Fight that instinct of your brain because it's wrong. Uh, so we, we want to say it goes like that, but it doesn't. So you want to stay parallel to the side and slide straight out. You can go as far or as close to the shape as you want. It just depends on how 
deep you want your shape to go in space. So I'm just going for somewhere in the middle. I could go way back here if I wanted, or I could go right up front. Doesn't matter. But the main thing is that I want to stay in between these two converging lines. Um, because these two lines tell us where the top and the bottom of the form are. Okay, so from here, then we're going to make a parallel line for this edge. And I'm going to line up my ruler, and I'm going to slide straight down, not going side to side, but straight up and down, and stop when I hit where this edge meets the converging line. So that little corner tells us where this line is going to be. And then I'll draw my parallel line. So now we have the side, the bottom, and the front face. All right, let's do a shape that is below the horizon line. And I think this time I'm going to make it kind of close to where the vanishing point is, so that we'll have kind of like a slivered edge on one side. So I am going to draw my square. All right, and again, we're going to draw converging lines from each of the corners that are unobstructed by the object. So obviously this one here would go straight through the shape, so it would be behind it, and we wouldn't see it. So we'll connect those edges for our converging lines. Here we go. And now we'll make our parallel lines to create the top of the shape. So remember anything that's below the vanishing point, we're going to be looking down at it. So we'll see the top, and since it's off to the side, we'll see a little bit of the edge. So I'm going to line my ruler up with the edge of the object, and this one I think I'm going to make kind of shallow. So I'm not going to go very far back in space. Okay, and then we're going to go off to the side. So again, resist the urge to tilt your ruler. It's really natural to want to do that. So just resist the urge, and you're going to slide straight back until we meet where this little corner is, where the two edges meet, and then we will draw a line. So this line has to stay parallel to this line. We always want to turn, but just don't do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is kind of give you some advice on overlapping your shapes. So what happens if you have a shape that's, you know, in front of or behind an object? What do we do to connect things? So what I think I will do is draw something below here to make it so that this is sitting on top of it. Okay, so now I have this area, and as we can see, it is um, kind of right below the vanishing point, so we're only going to see the front and the top of it. So this converging line is unobstructed by anything, so I can draw a line here. Um, but as you can see, when we get to this one, it is blocked by this square. So what I'm going to do is draw my line until I hit the square and then stop. And then just depending on how thick I want this box to be or how far back in space I want it to be, um, I could continue drawing my line back here. So the main thing is this line needs to stay connected to here. So always goes to the vanishing point. Very important that that happens. So now when it comes time to draw my parallel line to create the back of the box, I can line up my ruler and I want it to be deeper than this box. So I think my line is actually going to end somewhere behind the box. So I will line up my ruler and this is where it's really important that you stay parallel because we won't have an edge to line it up with. So I'm just going to stop when I hit the box, and there's nothing over on this side for me to draw. So there I have my edges, and then I can erase my extra converging lines. 
maybe I want to have a box that's sitting on top of this box. In that case, depending on whether I want this to be behind this box completely or sitting on top of it is where I'm going to draw my uh, parallel line. So if I stop my parallel line up here, it could be either, it could be behind it or on top of it, or if I perhaps drew this very lightly down here to give it a base and then gave myself a converging line, I just didn't draw in here so I have less to erase, but what I can do there is then create my parallel line behind it to show that there's another space back there. It gives me kind of a better idea of what's going on behind this box. So when you are practicing your own version of this, you don't need to do exactly as I did. Um, basically, if your box is in a slightly different position or a slightly different shape, it's going to look different than what I have on this page. So don't freak out if it doesn't look right because, you know, everybody's paper is going to be laid out differently and everybody's um, shapes are going to be a slightly different size and that's totally fine. Um, so the key here is that you are applying the skills that you're learning through this technique so that you can do it yourself and that your own version is going to look accurate. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a few more boxes, maybe overlap them just for visual reference, but I'll speed it up so that you don't have to sit through me talking forever. So same concept applies. So draw your shape, create your converging lines, create your parallel edges to the sides, and erase your extra lines. So that's it. Enjoy the rest of the timeline, and thanks for watching. Any ideas?